Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. Today, we have another exciting collaborative effort with fellow YouTube content creator, Captain Kleeman. So if you didn't come to us from Captain Kleeman's channel, please go over there and check him out. I think you'll find some pretty entertaining content over there. Building, fixing, modifying, customizing, He's the builder of the YouTube yacht. If you haven't been following that, check that series out. He's currently building a dump truck out of four other junk trucks. The original Run What You Brung and always uh, repurposing stuff and saving a buck. Uh, you may remember Captain, we did some work on his backhoe. Clint over at CNC donated a backhoe to Captain and uh, we helped get that thing back in business. We've got a little project here at Area Diesel Service. So if you haven't seen on Captain's channel, I think he's got tractoritis, right? He was uh, looking at his dear old 755, thinking that potentially it was time for an upgrade. And I think like the rest of us probably got the sticker shock and said, maybe I'll just keep my old sweetheart and give her some love. We've got some engine mount issues all the way around, which is what's leading to that oil issue because the seal on the back of the engine has been worn out from excessive vibration. And we've got a fuel issue, which I'm sure you can hear. And I don't know, filter's good, system's good. Doesn't seem like it's pulling in air anywhere. I think we're good on that. So it's probably either an injector issue or a fuel pump issue. My plan is to get those components off and mail them up to area diesel service and have them go through the injectors and the fuel pump and see what needs replaced if anything at all and what can be rebuilt that's what we're going to do for the fuel issue the 755 is on the operating table today getting some love and some deferred maintenance taken care of circa early 1990s checking in at about 1700 pounds and likely the most abused subcompact tractor in all of youtube go over there and watch what he's pulling off with this machine powered by a Yanmar 3TNA 72UK. That is a 0.9 liter engine. Little bitty baby, right? Checking in about 55 cubic inches. She is a naturally aspirated, indirect injected diesel engine somewhere in the 20 horsepower vicinity. So it doesn't sound like much on paper, but I'm telling you, if you go watch what this dude pulls off with this machine, you will be impressed. There was a few machines from that era. I don't know them all. 655, 755, maybe 855. Very well respected machines, highly sought after, still today almost collectible, right? I think, don't quote me, but I think those machines were entirely manufactured by Yanmar in kind of a private label situation for John Deere. If that's wrong, check me in the comments below, but I think that was a, a machine completely manufactured by Yanmar. And interestingly, the fuel system, right? So Yanmar is also a fuel systems manufacturer and area diesel service just happens to be a factory authorized Yanmar service dealers. In our possession, the injectors out of this machine. I don't think there was necessarily an issue, just kind of a wall we are there type of affair. We're gonna take these injectors. Visually, they look fine, right? But not a whole lot you can really tell visually on a mechanical injector. To some degree, you can get a read on them, kind of like reading a spark plug in a spark ignition engine. But if they're covered in wet soot, you know, potentially compression or combustion issue, but these all look to be very similar and they're not completely covered in carbon or trash. I think they're probably functioning. These are fairly common, right? These little Yanmars are in all kinds of stuff, little tractors and reefer units and all kinds of uh, generators and compressors. So there's a bunch of them out there. These are common. We see them all the time. We'll write them up, take them back to the fuel shop, pop them off, get a game plan, and then we'll update you from there. Now, if you haven't seen it before, this is an injector pop tester. Fairly simple device. We're hand pumping it here, replicating a fuel injection pump. That pressure comes out to this line and operates on the injector. And then we've got a valve here and we can open the gauge to that and we can detect what pressure is being required to unseat the pintle 
in the injectors. We are looking for nozzle opening pressure, right? That is a specifically calibrated number that operates in conjunction with the injection pump and all of the engine. Then we're also checking spray pattern. So again, indirect injected, not going to be super pretty like a direct injected injector, but we're going to put the injector on the line, torque her down. We're closed from the gauge now. We're going to bleed her out. Open the gauge, and we are 10 megapascals, all right, 100 bar or 1450 psi. Not much atomization, but again, not really a whole lot to be inspected. This is just kind of a dumper. Zero chatter. That one certainly still functioning. Probably not ideal. I don't know how many hours are on Captain's machine, but probably a lot if I had to guess. So this tractor had 718 hours on it when we bought it. And best I can recollect, that was sometime around 2016. And now it's got 718 hours on it. So the hour meter definitely doesn't work. I'm gonna say probably around 2000. It could be more, it could be less. I'm not 100% sure to be honest. I'm sure I could check my service records that I diligently keep. Number two, that one's even more wonky. About 900 bar. Getting a little bit of chatter out of it, but not a bunch. All right, number three. About a, about a hundred. 100 bar again. We'll bring you in on the spray pattern here close. Definitely leaves a little something to be desired. Time for service. So I'm going to go to the computer, look these up, and see what's out there, what's available, and we will come up with a game plan. Situational analysis complete. Customer has been advised. Estimate has been approved. The path of least resistance in this scenario is going to be brand new, authentic Yanmar injectors from the shelf at Area Diesel Service, most economical in comparison to the parts and labor to rebuild those injectors. And also uh, time is a bit of the essence. Pretty quick to whip these up into shape, probably would delay us by another day. And at this point in this project, given that the money is basically the same, it's tough to beat a brand new authentic component. We are going to bring one of these in and we'll chuck it up and show you what brand new looks like. And then the only other thing we've got to do, you can see right here, is the return fitting. And you can see a little bit of difference, right? So this is likely uh, cylinder one in the front of the engine return and then it'll daisy chain back to that one and daisy chain to the third. Point being, we've got to pop that off, clean it up, make sure it's got the appropriate seals back on it before we get these out to captains. So I don't know how well you'll be able to tell the difference on the camera, but the spray pattern out of this injector is considerably better than what we experienced on captain's injectors. Much more consistent. Opening pressure... 120 bar. Those were absolutely low on calibration, clapped out in atomization, and this is the absolute best case repair. There's nothing better than brand new OEM authentic Yanmar injector for this engine. That's it for the show and tell. We're going to clean up our mess and uh, we've got some other hardware we've got to take care of for Captain. We're this far into it. If Air Diesel Service can track down a complete rebuild kit with pistons, rings, rods, and bearings, then that's what we'll do. Injector situation resolved, and the second piece of the puzzle is an engine overhaul kit. We mentioned earlier that we are Yanmar factory authorized, but that is only in their fuel systems portfolio. We are not technically Yanmar authorized, on the engine side of their portfolio, but we do work with many other Yanmar distributors who are 
engine authorized. However, this particular kit, and as is often the case in the John Deere world, they've got the components captive to John Deere. So if you want the truly authentic Yanmar component, theoretically, technically official response, you've got to go back to John Deere and purchase it through that network. We did contact a couple of our friends on the engine side of our industry, and both of them had the same opinion of this kit. It is aftermarket. It is from a land far away. It is not from Amazon or eBay. It is held in a much higher regard than those kits, but it is not the authentic OEM overhaul kit. The parts look pretty good, and it is very, very thorough kit. Complete engine gasket kit, liners, pistons, pins and bushings. Uh, we're even talking about valves and valve seats and valve guides and uh, piston rings and then we've got rod and main bearings and the thrust bearings. It is a very thorough kit. I wish I could say it was made in America but I don't think you would find that to be the case even with a kit that came from Myanmar, right? Keep in mind that's not a made in the USA brand either. That's it for this quickie. We appreciate you watching. If you need anything please don't hesitate to let us know. You can call us at 800-637-2658. You can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com where you'll have the ability to chat instantly with a diesel engine expert through the button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or you can drop us an email at parts at areadiesel.com or you can stop in any of our locations in Iowa, Illinois, or Indiana, where you will universally find that we pride ourselves in providing a high quality customer experience. Reach out and leave us a review on the Googler. So that's it. Thanks for watching.